The small town of Tabazimbi is situated in the north of the Limpopo province. In the very heart of the bushveld and is affectionately known as such in Afrikaans as the Harki van die Bosveld. Game ranching is big business here and in South Africa and prices for animals at auctions can reach staggering amounts. Cape buffalo, white rhino, sable antelope, and color variants of some of the more common species like king wildebeest, royal wildebeest, white blessbuck, black impala, and nyala have been bred quite extensively because of their rarity, but in recent years, as numbers increased and the animals became more abundant, the value of the animals decreased. Be that as it may, the game farming industry is still big business in South Africa, and the northern Limpopo province is at the very center of this billion rand industry. Because of the value of these animals, it is therefore not surprising that game breeders want to make sure that the animals are kept in the best of health and they rely on the expertise and experience from the very best veterinarians in the country to do this. One of these vets is Dr. Gary Bauer. With 25 years of experience behind him, he is rated as one of the top wildlife vets in the country. Dr. Bauer's commitment to the conservation and preservation of the gene pools of South Africa's wildlife resources is unquestioned. And over the years, he has saved the lives of countless animals and is making a huge contribution to the game farming industry. My name is Tom and I'd like to invite you to join me as I travel around the country and find the innovative and inspiring people that are making a difference. And let's hear their stories. I met up with Dr. Bauer and he invited me to spend a day with him to witness a typical day in the life of a vet working in the wildlife and game breeding mecca of South Africa. Tom, yeah, the, the, the wildlife industry, the work of a wildlife vet in the wildlife industry is basically three sections. The one is conservation and, um, and wild animal preservation, which generally happens in the, in the wilder areas, the provincial and the national parks of those of us who are involved in the, in the intensive breeding or the game ranching industry is management, which I would say makes up the major part of our work um, and sales, um, capture for sales. And then the third leg is, um, is diseases and treatment of diseases. He had received a call the day before from a game farmer some 80 kilometers away that had said they had seen an eland bull that had what looked like a heavy tick infestation in its ears. I arrived at his headquarters before the sun was up and we wasted no time in setting off for the farm. Quite soon we were onto a sand road which had been quite badly washed away in places. We arrived at the farm and drove through the gate where we were met by Tommy who said that we could follow him to where we would meet the helicopter. Along the way we encountered a herd of buffalo next to the road. And just as we were approaching the lodge we heard the helicopter overhead. After a short briefing, Gary loaded a tranquilizing dart, packed up his bag, and they took off to look for the Eland bull. From the air, Gary and the pilot scanned the area and checked each animal as they flew over the herds of game. Whilst we were waiting on the ground for instructions from the helicopter, a rhino bull popped in for a quick chat before ambling off to go and do rhino stuff. It wasn't long and the call came in that they had located the eland bull standing under a tree and we got into position just in time to see the dart going in. Of course you assume that the animal, because it had not moved after being darted, is just going to lie down and go to sleep where he was standing. But Mr. Eland had other ideas and took off for a nearby thicket. It wasn't long before the tranquilizer took effect 
and the ground crew were able to get to the animal and get him into a prone position. When I reached the animal, it was evident that it had suffered greatly as both ears had necrosed off. The treatment that we instituted um, there was to rinse them out and wash them off um, initially with a antiseptic um, antibacterial solution and uh, to get as many of those maggots out as possible we removed also part of the necrotic and the dead tissue that was uh, that was around um, and then treated the wounds topically with um, and a caricide and a dip that would uh, kill the maggots as well as um, prevent any fly strike in the next day or two um, also with an antibiotic ointment um, and once we cleaned that up, we then concentrated on the systemic treatment, which um, included a long-acting antibiotic, um, a medication that would control and kill any maggots for about a three to four week period following injection, and then lastly, a painkiller and an anti-inflammatory. Um, the last bit of treatment that we did was to apply an ointment that control that contained a fly repellent as well as a as a um, and a caricide, so it kills ticks and fly and and maggots, um, and then also to apply dip a pour on dip, which would then control the ticks as well. After treating the animal, the reversal was administered. and the Elan bull was quickly on his feet. And trotting off to find the rest of the herd. After a quick cup of coffee at the lodge, we were back on another bumpy, sandy road where Gary was responding to another call. This time, it was to dart some animals from the ground from a breeding herd of sable antelope. Soon we were through the gate and pulling up to the homestead where we met up with the landowner's son, Quibus. He explained that the sable camp was close by and that from the back of his pickup we should be able to get close enough to the animals for Gary to dart them. The sable herd that we visited, the owners had noticed a slight drop in condition of the herd and we did, uh, we collected passively, in other words, without immobilizing any animals, we had some fecal samples collected and then determined that they had an extremely high worm burden and then to treat them via um, what's called a remote drug delivery system or a dropout dart. So you need to get a fairly big volume into them so your distances can't be as far as when you're just immobilizing them. Um, and you give each animal the required amount of, uh, of dewormer via a dropout dart. They soon began to become wary of the noise from the dart gun and were not letting us get close enough. Gary checked the distance, but the animals were just out of range. Kuba suggested that they go on the tractor as the animals were accustomed to it and Gary managed to dart the last one and the work here was done. Whilst we were busy in the sable camp, Gary had received a WhatsApp from another one of his client's farm managers saying that he had a sable bull that was injured and needed Gary to come and dart the bull and treat its wounds. Jean, the farm manager, greeted us and after Gary had made up a dart and loaded it into the dart gun, we jumped onto the back of the farm pickup and set off to find the sable bull. After just five minutes, Gary spotted it through some bushes and was quick to get a dart in. Soon the drug was taking effect and the sable bull came up to the pickup on wobbly legs and went down in the road. Gary jumped off of the pickup and grabbed the animal by the horns and held it until the rest of the team could get to the animal and make sure that it was secured. And unfortunately in this particular case two bulls, this bull and another bull got to each other across the fence of the camp and uh, and had quite a good uh, powwow and fight between between themselves as murphy always dictates to us the more valuable bull is the one that got off second best um, and he had quite bad damage to the bases of his horns um, as well as to the top of his eyebrows and around the base of the ears and the treatment there involved cleaning up the the wounds treating them with with antiseptics 
and then we just measured him, photographed his teeth for record purposes, and then he was treated systemically again with uh, with a long-term antibiotic for those open wounds at the base of the horns, um, as well as a painkiller um, and anti-inflammatory, um, very similar to to uh, the the Elan, but injuries, although different causes, were effectively the same. After the bull had been treated, the reversal was given and soon he was on his feet and making his way back into the bush. Whilst driving back to the manager's office, Gary noticed that one of the cows in a special breeding herd of camels had a peculiar gait and was favoring its left leg. He suspected that there was perhaps a foreign body in this animal's foot or that his leg had been injured in some way. After consulting with the farm manager, it was decided that the animal should be darted so that Gary could give it a thorough examination. We got close to the herd with the pickup and Gary was able to dart the cow. One of the other camels was quite curious as to what was sticking out of her friend's rump. It was clear that the animal was quite adamant not to lie down. So Gary used his rope trick to get the cow to lie down so that he could attend to the foot. After the back legs were secured to prevent them from kicking anyone, Gary got to work and examined the pad of the cow's left front foot. Um, this uh, camel cow um, was recently introduced onto the property where she now is, together with, uh, with seven other animals. But she was in particularly poor condition on arrival and hasn't really or hadn't really picked up any condition over the five weeks that she'd been there before we treated her. And on that morning that we noticed her, um, I was convinced from the way she was walking that we were going to find a, a sickle bush or a leadwood thorn uh, or some sort of foreign body in the pad of her, of her left foot. And the foot was examined completely and there was absolutely no sign of any foreign body um, in that left foot at all. Palpation and, and manipulation of the leg didn't reveal any fractures or any, any nasty injuries. After the injections and treatments had been given, it was time for the reversal and the cow managed to get to her feet and wobble off to find the rest of her friends. The sun was now starting to get low on the horizon and it was time for us to call it a day and head for home. For me, spending a day with Dr. Gary Bauer had been an incredible experience and an action-packed day. I had learned an enormous amount, but for Gary, this is his life and he does it because he is committed to and passionate about saving the lives of animals and has dedicated his life to help ensure that the animals that he fights so hard for will be around for many generations to come. Next time I meet up with the stakeholders that are taking tourism and the associated activities in and around the Tabazimbi and the Waterberg to new heights and how they are making it South Africa's new number one eco destination. Until then, keep striving and be kind. For tires, spares, repairs and apparel, Guts and Gas is my go-to shop. Meet Vin and the crew for the best service.